words, I would like to declare this symposium open. Thank you, Amdesh. Next thing, we would like to pay the homage to the martyrs. As you all know, the symposium, what we're doing today here, goes to all the victims of the terrorism, the tyranny in Kashmir. Some of our brothers and sisters who've been butchered, murdered, raped in the beautiful valley of Kashmir, what used to be the valley of joy and laughter, has been turned into the valley of tears and miseries. We would like to remember those martyrs. Shahidon ki chitaon par lagay ke har bars mele watan pe mitne walon ka bas yehi Good morning and namaste everybody. The Kashmir issue for me is personal as well as emotional. Not only that I was born and brought up and called at home for 20 years, but just three months back, my aged parents were made to flee Kashmir Valley in one shirt and one sari to an unknown land, unknown place, with no money, no assets, nothing to fall back on. My father got hurt on a grenade attack and imagine he was bleeding profusely from his chest wound and couldn't seek help at local medical hospital because he did Brought you up to date as far as the history of Kashmir is concerned way back in thousands of years until 1947. What I tend to do today here for the next 20, 25 minutes is to give you a brief overview as to what has happened in Kashmir. What's the root cause of the problem in Kashmir? How Pakistani invasion practically decimated in recent years the lives and the properties of ordinary Kashmiris. The role of the United Nations, just very briefly because I know I want to talk about the role of Islamic fundamentalism in creating problems in Kashmir. And then I want to throw some challenges to you, what you can do to help us combat that in California and in the rest of the country. Briefly, I know when I give talks in various places around the country, People don't even know what Kashmir is. So let me briefly show you what it is. Kashmir is the northernmost part of India. On the north, it's bordered by Afghanistan and Tajikistan. In the west, by Pakistan. In the north, by China. And if you look at the geography, there are really three main regions of Kashmir. In the northeast, you have Ladakh which is by far the largest district of Kashmir. In the south around here, the Jammu, and you have a small portion of land, which is called Valley of Kashmir. The territorial distribution by country of Jammu and Kashmir state is as follows. 35% of the area is occupied by Pakistan, about 19% is occupied by China, which includes about 2.3% ceded to Pakistan illegally, by the way, by Pakistan uh, in late 50s, early 60s. And India actually has a control of only 46% of the area. The population distribution, ladies and gentlemen, you have 64% of Muslims living in Jammu and Kashmir state, about 32% of Hindus, about 2 million people, and Buddhists and Sikhs comprise about 3.4% of the population of Jammu and Kashmir state. If you included about 2 million people, Muslims, who live in the Pakistani-occupied Kashmir, 
the Muslim population would be about 75% of the total population of Kashmir. If you look at now, friends, uh, it's been uh, about three years since uh, Pakistani sponsored terrorism led to the expulsion of the minorities in the Kashmir Valley. A quarter of a million people have been uprooted from their homes and there are estimates that one in every 200 Kashmiri Hindus has been murdered. We stand here in California to tell the world of this great tragedy that has gone largely unnoticed. Future historians will be incredulous that free nations did nothing to prevent murder and pillage by the long arm of Pakistani terror. Future historians will also blame opinion makers and journalists, especially those in powerful countries like the United States, for not condemning the terror whose slogan has been leave or die or convert. We live at the passing of an age if the experience of the Kashmiri Hindu community is a foreboding of the events to come, then a lot of misery and violence awaits us all. Should fundamentalist groups be allowed to spread chaos and mayhem in the name of liberty? Should those who throw acid in the faces of unveiled women be praised as revolutionaries? Should those who kill in the name of creating a pure religious state be allowed to dictate the lives of citizenry? We wish uh, peace for everyone in Kashmir. This peace and prosperity should extend to citizens irrespective of their ethnic background and religious persuasion. But the events since 1989... <laughs> मेरा जन्म हुआ था पचमढ़ी में मेरा बचपन बीता पूना पंजाब में और मैं स्कूल और कॉलेज गया बिहार में भारत माता हमारी माँ है माँ का दिल दड़क रहा है और उसी माँ के एक हिस्से में खून गिर रहा है हमें उस खून को रोकना होगा नहीं तो दिल की धड़कन बंद हो जाएगी दिस लेजेंड इज नन एज फॉर प्रोफेसर प्रहलाद इंदो प्लीज वेलकम प्रोफेसर प्रहलाद इंदो living in the states to consider a problem which is not just a Kashmir problem, which is not just an Indian problem, but which is part of the world problem, which may engulf the country, the world, in a third world war. I mean the Islamic problem, the Muslim problem. And I have come here at a time the world is undergoing major changes. Soviet Union is gone. International situation is undergoing a sea change. In India, a new government has come. There is a growing realization in India that their past policies were wrong and they must reorient their policies to suit the national and international situation. And there is a change in USA, a new president has taken the place of Mr. Bush. 